And you should expect if it's an urban center that's highly populated with many academic institutions, you're going to have, therefore, many qualified people for, to do that job. And if the city is an attractive place to live, you have even more people in those cities competing for the job. So you often find for places like Toronto, for example, mm -hmm. you have overqualified people pretty much landing every job because they weren't able to land the job that they would have ordinarily been competitive for. And your level of education can no longer land you the job that you are rightly pursuing that is entry level. So mm -hmm. what are ways around that? You're listening to the Public Health Insight Podcast, your go-to space for all things public health and global health, from the sustainable development goals to the social determinants of health, as well as interesting dialogues about the diverse career opportunities that exist in these fields. Remember to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify so other people like you can benefit from our content. Hey everyone, it's Gordon here, back with another podcast with the one and only LaShawn Benedict giving you in our series of nine lessons learned after graduating from our MPH degree, lesson two. You curious to know what lesson two is, LaShawn? I already know what it is. You know, tell so me tell, more. Tell, no, you, you, so what is it? What's the second and why nine? Why did we come up with nine in the first place? I think we wanted to be difficult and we didn't want to say well, 10, like an odd so number pick nine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like when they said, when you do salary negotiations, don't put like an even number, put like a weird yeah. number. Make, stands it, make out. it seem like it was intentional. Yeah. Intentional. Like there nine, no more, no less. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. Lesson number two, getting your first job is a big step. Now, why do we say that, Gordon? Why are we saying that it's a big step? I don't, I don't even remember. This was so long ago. We did this. So, <laughs> for, for context, <laughs> okay. for context, this is based on a series or a guest lecture that we were graciously invited to do for Western MPH's class of 2024. And we wanted to share the nine lessons learned from our perspective, since graduating from MPH. This was back a couple months ago. So it's it's not quite as fresh as it would have been when we were preparing for it originally. But I believe the intention was that you have an MPH class with people from all levels of backgrounds, different experiences. Some would have not had any breaks in terms of work experience as they pursued academia. And... Mm -hmm when they graduate, they're essentially pursuing their first sort of real full-time job, perhaps. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you have people who, even in like myself, who I worked in different spaces prior to my MPH, but not necessarily in the traditional public health space. And therefore, there's a lot of anxiety about the unknown, about what it's going to be like. When are you going to get it? You're hearing your friends get jobs after graduation or even before, and you're starting to get really anxious. Some people don't get a job till a year after. So when you do get that job after graduating, it's a very big step and something to be celebrated for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Notice that we're saying it's a big step and we're not saying it's the most important thing because mm -hmm. it isn't the most important thing. It's a big step. The most important thing is a practicum. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I don't know about that one just either. Kidding, just kidding. The most important thing is graduating. Mm. With honors? <laughs> <laughs> do they still do that? I didn't I get know. that. I don't know what that is. Yeah. So it's really important, right? Mm. And we're saying that because, like you mentioned, there are people who this might be their first job mm. ever. Mm. There's also a scenario where it could be your first public health related job which is also an important feat. But I also want to say that there are many, many different ways you can go, especially if you do a generalized MPH. There's different organizations and different areas within public health you can go. Mm. And it's really important from my perspective to have the right mindset going into it, right? Mm. Just because you have your first job doesn't mean you're going to end your career in that same space, mm. right? There's skills to build, 
there's people to meet, and there's money to be made, hmm. right? So you want to make sure that you're open to all these different things as you're approaching that first job. Now, I also want to make it clear that you might have a very great experience, right? And you might stick around for a while. However, there's also many stories I've heard of mm. where people go to their first job after the MPH and then they leave public health. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? So, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to name names, but there are people. We're not going to name any names, mm. but what all that to say is if you have a bad experience at your first job, that's not indicative of the public health field necessarily, mm. right? I've been in a part of so many different organizations and each of them are different in their own way in terms of workload, in terms of topic area, in terms of working together as a team or working independently. So if you get into a situation in your first job where you're not a fan of it, mm. please, please, please stick with it mm. and just have, like I said, that open mindset where you're just exploring and mm. you're open to new things. So right? it sounds like we're talking about things that get in the way of taking that first big step. Mm. And I think another one from what we know of our colleagues, right, mm -hmm. is being a little bit too picky sometimes. Right. Right. Being That's picky. Right. Being picky and maybe playing the field too much. So there is an opportunity cost the longer you wait to get experience. So you've already mm -hmm. had this opportunity cost doing your MPH degree in the first place. Some programs will be one year. Some programs will be two year. Some programs might be part time and longer than two years. So there's already an opportunity cost there. So there is a premium on getting experience as soon as possible. Obviously, mm -hmm. you don't want to do something that perhaps you had an experience in and it didn't go so well and you want to avoid that. That's fairly understandable. But you mm -hmm. want to weigh in sort of the speed at which you get something with how sure you are that you like it. I think those are two competing interests at times. And striking the right balance is very important. That's right. And you don't want to, like your, to your point, you don't want to be too picky, mm. right? You don't want to single yourself out and get yourself out of the, like a specific job just because cause it doesn't fit one of your requirements, whether it's geographic requirements, uh, salary requirements, contract uh, length, contract length, permanent, temporary. Like there's so many different factors, right? Union, non-union. However, like there's a lot of pros to kind of just exploring and just learning what you can in these different areas, right? Mm. Especially being so early on in your public health career. Yeah. So be open as much as you can and you might surprise yourself. Mm -hmm. Now the next thing is, and it's a something I'm very much an advocate for because it reflects my experience and it's around understanding the competitive nature of job markets. So we tend right. to talk about public health as like a singular job market, right? Like, Oh, there's not enough jobs out there, right? Like there's not a lot of job postings. I don't know where to get a job. Where are you looking? Mm, yeah. Right? So there are job markets, plural, not a singular job market. Mm. So whether it's a regional health system or, or, or more municipal or more local city level, you have to be looking in the right places. And you should expect if it's a urban center that's highly populated with many academic institutions, you're going to have therefore many qualified people for, to do that job. And if the city is an attractive place to live, you have even more people in those cities competing for the job. So you often find for places like Toronto, for example, mm -hmm. you have overqualified people pretty much landing every job because they weren't able to land the job that they would have ordinarily been competitive for. And your level of education can no longer land you the job that you are rightly pursuing that is entry level. So mm -hmm. what are ways around that? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And one of those ways, as Gordon kind of experienced for himself, is looking beyond into the other job markets and the other geographical mm. locations 
right? So maybe there's a city or town 30 minutes away, one hour away, a couple hours away mm. from a capital or a main city well, like from Toronto, your family, yeah. Right? Or, yeah, your family might be in the area. But, mm. again, it's not ideal in many cases to potentially leave your family and friends to pursue a job opportunity. But the mindset should be that, hey, I'm going to make the short-term sacrifice, mm. get the experience I need, make the connections I need to make to then leverage that and then apply to those hot spots that mm. you mentioned, right? Yeah. And you never know how it's going to go because I did that. Mm -hmm. I took a short-ish contract, but maybe long contract. It was 18 months for my first entry-level public health position. I had every intention of leaving before that or right when that was done. <laughs> Fast forward an additional two years plus on top of that, and I was still there because I had two opportunities to advance through the leadership ladder. And those are things that I was not anticipating when I took my first entry level job. So things might even surprise you in terms of how it, it plays out once you even set that short term goal, LaShawn. Oh, I'm only going to be here for 18 months and then leave. And then you have to be agile to adapt yeah. to different circumstances that might benefit your career further. And the thinking behind mine at the time as things played out is instead of making a horizontal entry-level move, I'm now able to make a horizontal leadership move to a city of my choice that's more in line with my lifestyle and where my family's at. So yeah. because I did that, I was able to make different pathways for myself. Yeah, and what that's kind of reminding me of is just everyone's situation is quite different, mm. right? And Gordon, coming out of the MPH program, graduated top of the class, got this fancy award and stuff hmm. and he's really good at interviewing and resume cover letter writing all that kind of stuff but he decided hey there are some benefits of going out here hey there's benefits of staying here he was able to weigh those different decision points hmm. now it is very well possible that you don't have to be top of the class and you could still mm -hmm. get a great job in one of those hot spots that we mentioned so Everyone's situation is different. Try not to compare too much, but just have that open mindset and have healthy expectations. Because why is expectation so important, Gordon? Yeah, expectations are important because you need to know. So we talked about the competitive job market. Expectations are also important in knowing like what jobs could you even be qualified to get in the first place right. so that you can have a realistic mm -hmm. understanding of where you might land following your job pursuits. So mm -hmm. there's many different types of jobs. Not every job posting will have a flashing light saying, hey, entry level, and you can get it if you have a master's degree and one year of experience. Mm -hmm. There's like code that you have to do a little bit of decoding right. based on the job posting description, the job title, and those types of things. So understanding that in advance before you start searching can set you up for a realistic expectation of how things might play out so that you're not very frustrated in the ultimate outcome, right? So there's many, we have previous episodes where we go through lots of different job titles and ways to even create your own job title because that's what employers do anyway. They make up job titles. Sometimes they <laughs> use traditional ones that already exist and sometimes they just make something up based on the specific project. So there is that out there. And again, we didn't touch on it too much as well. Like salary is something that's not always on a job posting. So mm -hmm. if you are someone with previous experience that is looking to enter your first post MPH position, maybe you want to start at a higher salary than someone who sort of didn't have a break where they were able to work and mm -hmm. went from undergrad straight into their master's. And so you should be aware of one, like obviously if the job posting has a salary, that's great. But doing your research to understand when it does not have a salary, if you'd ultimately be satisfied with what they would be offering. And of course, when you apply, you're doing your resume, you're doing cover letter, your thing, you're doing an interview, and you'll find out in the end 
But it takes a lot of effort to go through that preparation and then doing the interview. And then you could get a little bit frustrated and angry if yeah. something is way below what you're expecting. And don't set yourself up for failure. Be prepared. Exactly. And again, what we could see through all this, lesson number two, getting your first job is a big step, is we talked about all these different factors. We talked about the importance of landing a job, not necessarily being super nitpicky, mm -hmm. having that open mindset, thinking about the different competitive markets, the geography, thinking about what are those healthy expectations to have. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, your first job out of your MPH is, not going to be your life-changing experience and the thing that you're going to be doing the rest of your life. However, it can definitely shape how your career turns out and the types of things you do going forward. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of friends you could bring along the way, a lot of connections you could bring along the way, a lot of skills you could bring along the way, and a lot of experience you could bring forward. And that's how I kind of view my career too. Mm. Starting from my practicum experiences to my first job, to the next job, to the next job, you're building your toolkit to ultimately get to that uh, place that you want to be, whatever that looks like for you. Mm. So that's it. I have a favor to ask. Oh, okay. It's not for you, LaShawn, for, for the audience, just to clarify. So if you are someone who listens to our podcast and recently got a new job which is a big first step congratulations there's a cool new feature that buzzsprout has where you can actually send us a text message and we get it as fan mail so the way to do this is if you look into the if you look into the episode description wherever that you're accessing our episodes from at the very bottom it'll have a link that you can click and it'll pull up your text messaging app on your phone and you could basically say stuff there and it, we get a notification to check our mail and who knows, we might shout you out in the next episode. All right. Let's see. Sounds I'm good. excited Sounds to good. see who messages us. Yeah. Who messages us first. All right. This is Gordon and LaShawn signing off with lesson two until next time. Peace. Peace. This show was edited by me, Gordon Thane with additional editing from LaShawn Benedict. Sound design and mixing by myself and LaShawn Benedict. The original music from The Music Room, composed by Tom Fox, licensed from Johnny Harris. The cover art design for our show by LaShawn Benedict. The Public Health Insight Podcast is produced by PHI Media. Thank you for listening to the Public Health Insight Podcast your go-to space for informative conversations, inspiring community action. If you enjoy our podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. See you in the next one.